Hello everyone and welcome back to the Social Work PK channel. I am Arshad, Assistant Professor of Social Work at University of the Punjab and today I am excited to follow up on our last lecture. If you remember, we explored Freud's psychosexual theory in some detail. But after that session, I received a very interesting message from a senior social worker based in Canada, Dr. Nazir Hussain Chowdhury. He shared some valuable insights that I think you'll find really enlightening. Dr. Nazir pointed out that Freud's psychosexual theory, once groundbreaking, has largely become outdated in modern psychology. In fact, many newer theories have replaced Freud's ideas, and that's what we are going to explore today. Let's jump right in. First, let's quickly recap Freud's psychosexual theory. According to Freud, human personality development occurs in five stages, the oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital stages. Each of these stages is linked to a particular conflict, and Freud believed that unresolved conflicts during any stage could lead to problems in adulthood. Now, while Freud's ideas were revolutionary in his time, many of his concepts have fallen out of favor. Let's break down why this happened. Reason number one, Freud's theory lacks scientific evidence. Modern psychology is all about data, rigorous research and evidence. Freud, however, based his theory on clinical observations of a few patients, mostly wealthy Europeans. There were no controlled experiments, no large-scale studies. So, when today's psychologists examine his ideas, they find very little empirical support to back up Freud's claims. Let me give you a real-life example. Suppose you wanted to prove that childhood experiences with toilet training, part of Freud's anal stage, shape whether someone becomes overly neat or disorganized in adulthood. There's no solid evidence to back this up. Today, we know that behavior is influenced by multiple factors, such as environment, parenting styles, and cognitive development, not just unresolved childhood conflicts. Reason number two, Freud overemphasized sexuality. Freud believed that sexual urges were the main force behind our actions and personality development. While it was bold to bring these ideas into the public discussion at the time, today we know that human behavior is much more complex. Modern psychology recognizes that many factors, social influences, cognition, and culture, all play a role in shaping our personalities. For instance, if someone is dealing with anxiety, Freud might have traced it back to unresolved sexual desires from childhood. But in today's psychological practice, we'd look at cognitive factors like negative thinking patterns, or perhaps environmental factors like stress or family dynamics. Freud's focus on sexual desires as the root cause is just too narrow by modern standards. Reason 3. Our culture has changed. Freud's theories were developed at a time when discussing sexuality openly was taboo. He was seen as a revolutionary thinker, challenging Victorian norms. But as society has evolved, our understanding of human behavior has, too. Today, modern developmental theories take into account cultural diversity, gender roles, and the social contexts people live in, something Freud's theory failed to address. And here's something I want to emphasize, gender bias. This brings us to reason number four. Freud's theory has been heavily criticized for its gender stereotypes. His concept of penis envy in women is a prime example. Freud believed that women felt inferior to men because they lacked male genitalia, and this shaped their personalities. Today, this idea is not only considered sexist but also inaccurate. Modern feminist scholars have shown that women's identities are shaped by far more than their biology, social roles, cultural expectations, and personal experiences play major roles. Now, let's talk about what's replaced Freud's theory. Modern theories that provide a more balanced, scientific, and empirically supported view of human development have taken the spotlight. Let me share a few of these with you. First up, we have Eric Erikson's psychosocial development theory. Erikson expanded on Freud's work, but instead of focusing on sexual stages, he focused on social and emotional development throughout the lifespan. For example, Erikson's stage of trust versus mistrust describes how an infant develops a sense of security based on how their caregivers meet their needs. Unlike Freud, Erikson looked at lifelong development and recognized that social experiences, how we relate to others, are key in shaping who we are. Now let's move to Jean Piaget's cognitive development theory. 
Piaget didn't focus on sexuality at all. Instead, his theory is all about how children develop thinking and problem-solving skills. His work has been hugely influential, especially in education, and gives us a clearer understanding of how a child's mind evolves as they grow. Another alternative is attachment theory by John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth. This theory highlights the importance of early emotional bonds, not sexual drives. According to Bowlby, the way we attach to our caregivers as infants affects our relationships throughout life. It's about emotional security and how that shapes our ability to form healthy relationships. This has had a big impact, especially in understanding parent-child dynamics. Then there's social learning theory by Albert Bandura. This theory suggests that we learn behaviors through observing and imitating others. For instance, if a child grows up watching their parents handle conflict calmly, they're likely to adopt similar strategies. It's not about unconscious sexual urges, but rather how we learn from the world around us. And finally, let's not forget about cognitive behavioral models. These models focus on the idea that our thoughts influence our behavior. For example, if someone thinks negatively about themselves, they're likely to behave in ways that reinforce those thoughts. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CBT, which is based on these ideas, is one of the most widely used and effective therapeutic approaches today. So, to summarize, Freud's psychosexual theory is no longer widely accepted because 1. It lacks empirical evidence. 2. It overemphasizes sexuality as the primary driver of behavior. 3. It's culturally outdated. And 4. It has been heavily criticized for its gender bias. In its place, we now have more holistic theories like Erickson's psychosocial theory, Piaget's cognitive development theory, Bowlby's attachment theory, and Bandura's social learning theory, all of which give us a better rounded understanding of how humans grow and develop. I hope this gives you a clearer picture of why Freud's theory, while historically significant, has been replaced by more modern, scientifically backed approaches. Thank you for tuning in. Once again, I'm Arshad, Assistant Professor of Social Work at the University of the Punjab, and I'd like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Nazir Hussain Chowdhury for prompting this important discussion. If you found this lecture useful, make sure to subscribe to my channel, The Social Work PK, for more insights on social work and psychology. Until next time, take care and keep learning.